Welcome back everybody. Today we are focusing on level four of the Factorio 1.0 tutorial, which focuses on science and automation. Oh, so level four starts with a cutscene. I don't think this was in the original tutorial. Okay, so the sector scan is complete. So it's kind of picking up, I think, where we left off with level three. So for me, again, pressing tab kind of gets into my inventory, but it's probably a completely different button for you guys. I know I'm the one with the really weird controls. So uh, the radar has detected a distress beacon, but the signal is extremely weak. My engineer says, hmm, based on the attenuation of the signal, the source must be over 200 kilometers away. It looks like the signal strength is dropping. Going on foot would take far too long. Oh no, is this gonna make me do uh, trains? Okay, if I want to track the source, I will need a faster method of transportation. Okay, what is that method gonna be? First, I should research something to help protect myself from the enemies. Okay, good idea. All right, so just a reminder to you guys, if you have not yet played through levels one through three, I'd recommend do those tutorials or at least watch those videos first before moving on to this video, uh, which if you're playing in game, you have to beat those anyway. Uh, but let's actually go ahead and get started with crafting the first thing. So we have to build a lab. So lab is over here under the production menu. Uh, I am missing the resources needed though. So I require 36 iron plate and 15 copper. And so far in my inventory, I only have 10 of each. So this is where automation will really come into play. In this uh, scenario here, we already have a little bit of automation going. Over here is the steam engine setup. We've already got some uh, direct uh, supply for, of coal feeding into the boilers here that are needed for the power. Uh, some broken steam engines over here. We've got, what is this? Stone over here. We've got one lone, no, two lone turrets over here to the top with a lot of dead biters. And uh, we do have some biter nests nearby. This biter nest over here, I think is gonna be more problematic for starters. Uh, over here, we've got some mining of iron ore. And that's going into this little row of smelters here and here. And this is all automated already for us. We've got uh, the two things we need for early game, which is the ore we're trying to smelt and then the fuel source. And that is joined up on the same line here with the outputs of the iron plate going on this line here and this line here. And they're joining up into uh, this assembler is producing iron gear wheels. And this one produces transport belts. Uh, we've got copper smelting over here. Again, we've got a fuel source already in play. We've got uh, the copper ore coming from these miners over here and again, spitting out over here. So we've got the bare essentials automated and this inserter is pulling some iron plate already from the line for us. So I'm already able to get a lot of the products in my inventory there. Um, ooh, this guy though is not getting power. So. The first thing I want to focus on is extending the belt lines down a little bit. I do have a little bit in my inventory. So we're gonna add a couple more there and we're gonna kind of just fix a couple of these things that are broken. Just because running out of power is one thing you'll inevitably do if you're a new player, it's bound to happen. But if you can avoid running out of power, you're gonna be in much better shape. So to build more boilers, like uh, we need to fit in right here that you can see was destroyed earlier. We do need some stone. So I'll grab some stone conveniently right there. I do need some trees for the power poles, which I will farm a little bit over here. So let's go ahead and replace the power pole there since it seems like one went there. Now we can go ahead and build the boiler and we can build two steam engines and then there's a couple more that need to be built over here too. So we'll just start replacing a couple things because like I said, running out of power is something I know from experience that I need to prioritize over anything else. So even though the objective is to craft and build a lab, I definitely don't wanna do that if I don't have the power to support it. So we'll add in a couple more inserters and there's nothing wrong with building in your pocket. Not everything has to be done via uh, pure automation right away. 
Another steam engine goes there. And uh, these are missing water. So, um, one thing we can do, we don't yet have underground belts, which is something that we'll get later on. So I'm gonna add in an additional offshore pump, which it looks like was here originally anyway. That will go there and we'll make some pipe. And uh, you could use underground or you could use regular pipe. Really doesn't matter apart from the regular pipe is quicker to produce in your inventory, but uh, you cannot walk through it. So it's kind of a bit of an obstacle. So I'm going with the underground pipes there for that purpose alone. All right, so power looks like it's fixed. Uh, we've got another radar machine that we need to craft, but let's, I guess, go ahead now and do that lab since that is kind of what the objective is telling us to do anyway. But another advantage to having done the power is that meant uh, more resources got smelted and produced in that time, uh, which will come in handy a little bit later. So now that we have that lab, I'm assuming we're gonna have to place it down somewhere. So labs do have to be placed somewhere within the electricity field of the power poles. So again, that's the little blue rectangle that hovers around it. Eventually you can get upgraded power poles and uh, those have a bit of a wider field in which to place things that require the power. So I'm gonna place it uh, somewhere where I have a decent amount of area. How about um, right here for now? So I'll have to take power to it. So this is saying labs will consume science packs and use them to research the selected technology. Technologies need a certain number of science packs to be completed. So using more labs will speed up your research as long as you feed them with science packs. All right, good, we've got that done. Let's add some power to it, which we can do easily by extending that power pole there. So our new objective, use labs to research stone walls. Open the technology screen using the T key, which I think is standard. Um, so T opens up the technology tree. Uh, these ones in the yellow here mean it's something that we can research. All of these ones here in the red means we have to research something first before we can move on to these. So I guess uh, since the game is telling us to do stone walls, we'll do logistics a little bit later. We'll do stone walls first. Um, logistics are even more expensive than walls, so it's, I suppose, fine that we start with them. Let's see, what should we do first? So to create labs, uh, go over here to your uh, crafty menu, open the intermediate product section here, and you'll see all of these little flask looking things are the labs. So this early in the game, the only one we have available to produce is called automation science or the red science packs. So hovering over the recipe, you'll see here that it requires one copper plate and one iron gear wheel in order to produce one of these science packs. Conveniently, we have iron gear wheels nearby, we have copper plate nearby. So all we have to do is figure out a way to join these products together in order to make the red science. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and craft a couple assembling machines by hand. And that should just take a minute. In fact, to speed things up, we can grab a little bit of the iron gear wheels and put it in the inventory, which will prevent them from having to be crafted by hand. And then let's grab the assembling machine and I'm gonna place it right here for now. Actually, let's scratch that. Let's move this over by a tile. And that way we can add a couple more um, assemblers down in this direction and have a way to not only direct input into this assembler uh, if we want to, but we can have um, an assembler feed like into this box here and then go down and still have room for another inserter to pull from that belt line and into this assembler. So I'm sorry if that's not making a whole lot of sense, but maybe it might be easier if I just show you what I'm thinking. Okay, so inserter spits out the iron gear wheel onto this machine. We'll put another couple of assemblers down here. We'll add in some inserters. And in fact, we don't have underground belts unlocked yet, but we can delete that or move it. Put that box back so that belts are still working for us. And then carry that down. 
We'll put in the inserter here. And then we can continue copper. I don't have a splitter yet. So I'm gonna kind of snake the copper plate around. So because uh, this line here is more than one uh, tile away from the assembler, we do have to use the long-handed inserter. And that's where these really come in handy because uh, they do have a longer reach, of course. So we can fit that one there, that one there, and that one there should do it. We have to remember we have to make room for our power poles. And those have to go anywhere where you see a blinking uh, kind of yellow light with the uh, power cable attached to it. And then we do need a line for output. So anytime you make anything, you need to have lines of your input coming into the assembler. And then you need to have at least one line uh, devoted to your outputs. And you can mix and match. We could technically join up the iron gear wheels and the copper plate together, or we could technically output onto a line that also provides an input. But instead, just to be a little bit more organized, I'm gonna make a separate line for the output of the red science pack. So that's going there. Now we can add in a yellow inserter. We'll grab another couple inserters here and there. So hopefully you're following with me so far. Uh, that doesn't have to extend down that far. Um, so now that we have all of the areas for um, belts into consideration and we have um, the assemblers down and we've got the inserters installed, the last thing we need to do is place the recipe. So you do that by clicking on the assembler and we are making red science. So we're gonna click on the red science pack and you can see it's already beginning to work. So that is awesome. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate the recipe to these other assemblers as well. A really easy way to duplicate a recipe, and I'll show you guys right here, is to shift left click and then hover over the assembler and then use your right mouse uh, key there. And then uh, without taking your finger off of the left shift key, go ahead and hover over a new assembler and use your left click mouse button. And there you go. All right, now our product is beginning to fill up over here. So. Uh, the labs don't do us any good by having them just sitting here on the belt line. So we are going to instead take them to the research lab over here where it can actually get used. There we go. And then again, we're gonna leave the belt line one tile uh, away from the uh, actual research lab there. And in the middle goes a normal inserter and it's already beginning to feed those uh, science packs into the lab machine. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and click the wall research thing here. We'll start research. And then you can see that um, over here to the top right, you can see kind of the progress of whatever you're researching and uh, the tech that you're researching. So stone walls, and we're at maybe an eighth of the way done or something already like that. So obviously if we were to then make more labs, which we can do easily like this. We can speed up our research by increasing our throughput. Like that. Let's move on to the next objective for level four. So the next thing we need to research is automobilism. So let's go ahead and click open that T tab again. Automobilism is where is it? All the way over here. Wow, we've got a lot to research before we can even unlock it. So we've got to research steel and then logistic science packs and logistics. And then those will unlock two other things, engines and logistics too. And then once those are researched, we can then research automobilism. So uh, let's start with the more basic things. So let's do logistics first, and then we'll move on to logistic science packs. And don't forget, you can get carried away with building and research and automating, but there's still that enemy we have to worry about, which it looks like it's a good thing I came over here because uh, we don't have any ammo in this box. Uh, so automating some ammo would be very nice and uh, wouldn't hurt if I give this guy some fuel too. To automate, 
ammo, which may or may not come in handy for this uh, level in particular. We do require uh, just iron plate. So we'll put down the assembler. Again, we're putting uh, one tile in between the assembler and the nearest belt with our product. We're gonna grab an inserter. We're gonna power it right there. And then we're gonna put in the recipe. And let's not forget, we also have to put in our output inserter or else it will eventually build up and store to some extent in the assembler itself. But if we want an unlimited amount of supply, theoretically, we're gonna have to have an inserter outputting it somewhere. In this case, outputting it into this box is just fine. All right, uh, let's add one more bit of labs over here. Just because seeing that we're backed up on our belts implies that we can go ahead and increase our throughput, which we can do by adding one more lab down. And now we can go ahead and research the logistic pack since we just got done researching logistics. Uh, logistics just unlocked for us a couple new things. We can now have the ability to create underground belts as well as splitters, which would prevent uh, kind of this weird looking thing here, which causes me to loop back on itself. Uh, so instead I'm gonna be creating a couple splitters and underground belts by hand, and then we'll start planning on the green science packs. There we go. I like that a little bit better because it does save on a little bit of belt and uh, taking up as much space from having it to loop back on itself. Alrighty, so uh, for those of you who don't know, green science packs are gonna end up requiring transport belts as well as inserters. So even though I don't have it unlocked yet, I do know the recipe at least by heart um, this early on. I can't say that about everything. Uh, so we already have transport belts getting produced here that was uh, preset with the level. So that's taken care of, but that means the next thing we need to automate will be the inserters. So let's again hover over the recipe here and that is gonna be requiring iron plates, iron gear wheels, and electronic circuits. So electronic circuits I know have some subcomponents within themselves too. Electronic circuits end up taking copper wire and iron plate. So that's the first thing I want to automate. So let's uh, actually use some underground belts and we're gonna join up some copper plate and iron plate and they're gonna become the electronic circuits. So let me craft a couple underground belts. All right, so now that we have an underground belt, we can essentially continue this line further on and then we can continue the copper further on over here too. So that way we've got a little bit more room in which to play. So we'll take the uh, assemblers again. We'll have to craft a couple more because those are not yet automated. And the first thing I want to do is craft some copper wire assemblers. So I'm gonna do that by putting the assembler here, here, and here. And we're gonna have all three of these produce copper wire. And again, to copy the recipe, left shift click while at the same time doing right mouse button and then hover over the blank ones and do the left mouse button there and there. Perfect. Let's extend the copper plate there. Let's put in an inserter for each of those. And we need a couple more to go actually. A good ratio for electronic circuits is three copper wire assemblers to two assemblers that go into making the circuits themselves. So we'll craft just a couple more. And then a good layout would be something like this where we can actually have four inserters with input from the top inserter and the bottom inserter just like that. And then we'll have the middle assembler feed into the assembler here at the top, as well as the assembler that we're gonna place here at the bottom, just like that. And then we'll have room for our outputs there and there with a belt that we can move either upwards or down or Honestly, in any which way we can imagine. In this case though, I think what we'll do is try and fit another assembler right here. 
So to do that, let's uh, get rid of that. And we can fit in another assembler right here for I think the inserters if we can get to fit. Okay, so this will mean we have to put in the recipes for the green circuits which are right there like that. We can use an underground I think. Yep, we can fit it right there. So now we have even more room in which to play right here. So let's put in the inserter recipe, which is right here. This um, inserter recipe requires the green circuits, which we just automated. It also requires some iron gear wheels, which we conveniently have right here. Since we have the iron gear wheels right here, and since we're only using iron gear wheels into three assemblers, we could technically use just one assembler here to also feed into this assembler for the inserters. So we'll place that inserter there to feed the uh, iron gear wheels there. We'll fit another insert to get the iron plate. We'll do uh, the belts here to fit the uh, green circuits. And then we do need a section for the output, which if we build a couple more inserters, we can put right there into a line that will feed somewhere else. Where that else is, I don't yet know. But let's go ahead and give everything power. We're gonna notice things starting to turn on, starting to work, and our factory will continue to grow. And let's not forget, we do have to continue to research since the logistics science pack is done. Remember that for the car, we've got our subcomponents that need researched. Um, let's just go in order, so that means that steel will be next. So go ahead and we'll click start research. This one is a lot more expensive because it takes 50 science packs. Uh, but that's okay because we have time. Oh, you know what? I made a boo-boo though. I forgot that we need the iron plate to feed into the green circuit assemblers over there. Okay. See, it happens even to the best of us. Uh, do I have? No. I'll have to make a couple more underground belts. I will place the uh, belts right here. We'll use some red or long-handed inserters to pull from the belt line like that. And then looks like we need another bit of power. Okay, so that means that the output for the inserters can't go there like I was planning. So that's okay. We can just move it to go towards the left or technically to the right if we wanted to. We do have that ability. But now that we have inserters technically automated, we have to think about where they're gonna go. So again, let's go ahead now and look at the green science pack recipe. Green science packs take inserters and transport belts. So basically, we just need to figure out a way to get uh, transport belts from this line joined up with the uh, inserters that are all the way down over here. And thankfully they're pretty close together, so I could probably figure this out. I'm sure I could. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is add a long-handed inserter there. I'm going to grab an underground belt so it can sneak underneath the inserter there. And then you'll see that the product is gonna spit out right there, which is good. Uh, then, Actually, can it go any further? No. Let's craft a couple more underground belts there. I'm gonna do another underground belt there so that we can have this side bypass the belt. And they are so close now. Uh, we just have to get them joined up. What we could do is put an underground belt here and have it switch directions. So instead of going to the left, it's now going to the right. And then we'll move this power pole there. We'll get rid of that one. And then as soon as I put this belt here, we're gonna see them connect evenly and it's gonna be beautiful just like that. All right, now, both products are now on the same line. Is it a little bit more complicated than it could be? Absolutely, but I am definitely known for making things way more complicated than they need to be. But the point is, they're both products now on the same line. Now we just have to feed these products into some separate assemblers that make green science packs. 
So what we need is a couple more assemblers. I'm gonna do, I think just, uh, let's do another three or mm, let's do four. Let's see if we can support four here. Uh, we will put it right uh, here, 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 and here. And I'm getting a little distracted because we're getting some biter attacks. Uh-oh. Sometimes you gotta take a break from automation. Oh, no. Oh, no. They destroyed all of my turrets. Uh, okay, well, like I said earlier, it happens to the best of us. I'm definitely not immune to mistakes or thinking too much about automation and not enough about my military. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna have to worry about military before I can move on much further. I do have 106 ammo, which is not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but I should uh, try and focus on that a little bit more if I can. To do that, we'll just actually add in one more assembler once I get it. We'll grab some more iron plate. In fact, let's grab some more copper plate over here too. Ooh, ooh, I didn't cap that. Noob mistake, noob mistake. Oh no, more biters. Oh my gosh, more biters. Put down a turret, cause the turrets are always more effective than what you can kill by hand. Oh my goodness. Well, some of you who might be in a similar situation to me don't feel like this is game over. It's not. It most certainly is not. All you have to do is rebuild, which we can do easily. It just means we have to craft a couple of things by hand, but things are always rebuildable. You'll also notice that I crafted a couple repair packs and those come in handy because the health of my steam engine here, for example, is not very good. So hovering over and clicking it, I can repair things that have their health damaged. Well, a couple minutes later and a lot more corpses later, I'm all repaired. I've amped up my military a lot more considering that the biters are a bit more of a problem than I was giving them credit for initially. So I now have four turrets with a box in the middle that I've supplied by hand, which it looks like I need to supply some more by hand. I've made a weird assembler for some walls, which is going straight from a furnace, which I supply the fuel for by hand that is coming directly out of a miner. So this is one way of doing it. I now have eight walls, which is eight more than I had before, which I'm gonna place right about there. Just as a little bit of extra defense, I'm guessing that's why the game encourages you to make walls first. Um, I've beefed up some more turrets over here. Uh, let's grab some more ammo. I've added in a second ammo assembler over here. And we've still got the original, which I need to remember to cap that. And there's a couple other turrets over here as well. So uh, apart from beefing up my military area, not a lot has changed for the progression of uh, the green science packs yet, which we will go ahead and finish up now. Uh, steel processing has also gotten done getting research, so that's good. We'll move on to that next in just a second. So uh, what I'm doing is trying to figure out how I'm gonna get the products of the uh, inserters and the belts to the assemblers that are gonna be for the green science packs, which I'm gonna designate here. So again, we need at least one tile separating the products and our um, assembler. So I'm gonna extend this line to go all the way down right there. We will suck up a couple of those materials because these are the same materials we need for building a lot of these things anyway. We'll do some inserters there. We'll add in some power like that. And then we need to worry about an output line. And since I already have my uh, line here for the red science packs, I plan on putting my green science packs to join up with it. That way I don't have to do an entirely separate line and half of the line up here doesn't go to waste. So this is gonna be my output line here. And we'll add in the power again. And to join up the belts, because I need 
the um, green signs packs to be on the opposite side of the belt, I can't just join it directly. So what I'm gonna do is use an underground belt to go underneath like this. And granted, there's many ways to solve this problem, but in particular, this is how I'm gonna do it right now. And just like that, we're gonna be able to get the green signs packs equally onto the other half of the belt here that's not getting used. So the last thing we have to do, put in our product recipe. In this case, it's the green or logistic science pack. We're gonna copy that easily to the other three assemblers. And there we go. It is automated. So that means we can start working on steel and we can start to see what else we can research. So next is going to be uh, probably electronics, which still only takes the red science packs, but it is a precursor to automation too, which we will need. So I'm gonna do that next. Now on to steel. Steel is a little bit more daunting because it does require so much iron, but uh, do I have anywhere else that is gonna give me an iron patch? Oh, look at here, we've got iron just over here. So instead of trying to make a steel furnace setup from this very small amount of smelters and small input of um, iron ore miners that I have, I'm gonna start fresh and we're gonna make a completely uh, separate fresh um, iron mining build and some smelters that will go into steel. So first thing I needed to do is grab some more raw materials. Thankfully we have a little bit available to us by uh, box there and we'll grab just a little bit more copper. Although like usual, iron is what we're low on. Sucking up a couple more things. In fact, I'm gonna suck up some green circuits. We'll suck up some belts. All right, so starting from scratch for a steel build, let's build a couple more miners because steel requires a lot of iron. So the early game mining setup that I like is just basically miners right across from each other, almost look like they're kissing onto a, a shared belt line. And then we are going to need some coal. So we have to think about how we're gonna get coal all the way over there. What I plan on doing is building a splitter, which I already have. And I am going to put the splitter there and filter out just the coal. And the coal will go with me into this direction. I do have to think about like where it can go, where I have room to fit my underground belts to get from here to there. So if you didn't wanna worry about underground belts, you could just extend it all the way around and have it wrap. But I like to try to find the most direct route possible, which means we're going underground. So let's grab some underground belts. We're gonna underground uh, right there. No, one more. We need to start earlier. So that means we have to move this inserter over, which is not a big deal. And then this will go over here. An underground belt will fit there to there. Ooh, that's a problem. And then it didn't occur to me that I already have an underground belt here. And one thing you cannot do in this game is have um, different sets of underground belts that are of the same speed or the same uh, color, in other words. So I cannot have um, this set of underground belts uh, going this way and another set going underneath that are of the same type of underground belt. So what I wanna do instead to get around this problem is to do automation two for my next research, which conveniently we can now unlock. So let's start that research. That should just take a little bit. And then what we can do is uh, try to fix this so I don't have to belt braid because belt braiding is definitely not something needed in a tutorial series. Maybe I need to go upwards. Let's do that. Let's change direction. Not a big deal. 
we'll change it so that the output priority on this filter splitter is gonna be on the right instead of the left. And all that means is that instead of the coal coming out from the bottom, it's gonna come out from the top in this direction. And as you guys can tell, I'm winging it, but there's usually, I can't say always, but usually a way to solve the problem, which is what's so fascinating about this game is that there's so many ways to solve the problems. It never gets boring if you look at it that way, uh, because then you're challenging yourself on new ways to find solutions to the same problem. Um, okay, so trying to get coal over here. We are so close, we're gonna do it. I'm adding some more underground be belts there just to give myself more room. And it's snaking around. It's looking ugly. This is beginning to look like what we call spaghetti, but we're gonna do it. And there we go. All right, so that means all we need to do now is make a couple smelters or stone furnaces, in other words. And we'll um, mine a couple more trees, just a few, so that we can make some more power poles. Power poles made, let's extend power like so. Like that. And we can just go ahead and put them behind the miners there. Uh-oh, what's getting attacked? Looks like we've got a couple more repairs to do. Let's not forget about the militarization. Ooh, this box over here is already empty of ammo. That's craziness. It would be nice to automate ammo, meaning like I have a belt line coming up here, but I think we're a little ways off from that. Instead, let's grab 30 more walls and we'll extend the walls like this. And one nice thing to do, especially early game, is to find an area where you have a choke point uh, like this, which is naturally created because we have an area here of water that biters cannot cross, as well as this area uh, with the cliffs, which biters cannot cross. So um, that is a good spot to place some walls because you can place fewer walls, but still have the same effect of creating um, a choke point or at least some more protection for yourself that comes fairly naturally with fewer resources. Okay, so back to steel. We need to craft a couple more furnaces. We need to carry on this line over here. And for steel, uh, what I wanna do, actually let's join up the um, iron ore and the coal first, because the precursor to steel is to have um, iron plate produced. Now there's a lot of different ways to do some steel builds, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna try and keep it very simple. So let's go ahead and just build a normal iron ore smelting setup, just kind of like we have here, where we have a row in the middle of belts with the equal input of the iron ore and the coal. So we're gonna extend this down. And then let's go ahead and place a smelter on either side like that and like that. We'll do our inserters on uh, either side of this belt in the middle and then we'll do a belt for our output on the outsides of these smelters there. And then all we have to do now is continue these furnaces down and just kind of continue further along so that we have a decent amount of input of iron ore coming in to supply the steel. Now that we have the furnaces producing the iron plate, I'm gonna take these separate belt lines over here that just have the iron output and we're gonna join them up just like this. And then we can continue the coal. Actually, let's delete these and have it fit down just like this a little bit more so we can do that splitter trick we did earlier to divvy off the coal here. So we're gonna do coal filtered out of the splitter so it'll be coming from this line. And then I think what we'll actually do is move this down a tile. We'll have um, an underground belt join up here, just like that. We'll extend this belt of the iron plate down a little bit too. And then now that it, they're joined up like that, it's equally on either side. 
and then looks like I have to move this down just a touch more actually uh, because I don't want it to interfere with accidentally getting mixed with this iron ore over here. So down one more should be the trick here for us. Just like that. And then adding in that belt. And now we have plenty of room for the iron plate to equally join up now with this coal, just like that. And then now let's make some room by getting rid of some of these excess trees nearby. And now we have an equal amount of iron plate and coal in the same belt. We can move these back to the middle just so it's in line with these smelters over here. We'll add in some more furnaces like that and like that and do it just like we did with the iron smelting build. And we'll do outputs on the sides as well, just like we did earlier for iron. We'll do a couple more power poles. We've already got, I think, just enough inserters to get by. Put that there, like that, like that, and like that. Power poles, and then we're gonna start getting steel production. And of course we can continue this on uh, forever and ever if we technically wanted to, but instead I'm gonna end these belts here. We can always add more furnaces if needed, but I think four is good for starters and for the sake of this tutorial when we really don't need that many materials. We're just trying to get enough materials up and running to research cars, which reminds me, we've researched automation two now. So clicking on the uh, car icon again over here, we have two more things we have to unlock before we can unlock the car. The next one we're going to be doing is engines actually. So let's go ahead and click on research for that. And now you can see that we have a little bit of steel trickling in. It's not much. I probably will extend this a little bit more. Not that I have a whole lot of room given that this is a tutorial and my map is limited. Uh, but you can see the concept behind this works. Well, engine research is finally done, and in that time, because it took so long, I did do a couple changes and tweaks to the base. I extended the steel smelting build just a little bit by two more furnaces on either side, so we now have a little bit more of a healthy supply of steel in hand. I was able to beef up iron plate production in part by advancing another bit of a branch of iron ore up here and into these smelters to increase production. I've further capped off the ammo, which I have at least 200 now in either of these boxes. And I've got tons of turrets and walls up here. So I'm doing okay on militarization now at this point. So uh, that means we can go ahead and do some more research and then we'll actually move on to crafting the engines. But the next thing we need to do as a precursor to automobilism is logistics too which is this one here. This one is also a bit expensive. It takes 200 each of the red and green science packs. We definitely wanna get that started instead of waiting. So in the meantime, while that is researching, we'll go ahead and start an engine build. So engines, if I can refresh my memory, takes steel plates, one iron gear wheel, and two pipes. And conveniently, we have pretty much all of those items on hand right in this area over here. We have iron plate nearby, which can go directly into producing pipes. And then of course steel is nearby. So all we have to do is craft a couple assemblers, which it looks like we already have five. So the first thing I'm gonna do is craft, or actually I think I will branch out the iron plate directly from here. So um, that way we're gonna steal a little bit from going directly into the steel build, but I think that will be okay. So we'll add a splitter right there. Continue that belt down and this is where we're gonna do the branching. And we can cut this line right here, in fact, and then we can uh, join up the steel and the iron plate, in fact. So let's go ahead now and do an assembler that produces iron gear wheels, which we can do by placing in the recipe, we'll do iron gear wheels and we'll have the output be somewhere up there. And then we need another assembler that's gonna do the pipe. Pipe also takes iron plate. So we'll have it uh, 
Also take from the iron plate area near here as well. Here's an inserter for both of those machines. We'll put in the pipe uh, assembler recipe right there. We'll continue the uh, outputs just like that. So that way we have iron gear wheels and the pipes joining up equally. And we can continue on through here. And then because I'm running out of room, I'm gonna snake my belt line over here and down this way. So we can have the belts go just like this. Snake this around so I have gaps in between for room for uh, the inserters and things like that. We'll actually move this assembler, move it down right there. Should be plenty of room now. And then this can become the engine recipe, just like that. So uh, steel we've got covered, iron gear wheels we will have covered, and the pipes we'll have covered once we actually get power over here and the additional inserters that we need. So just like that, we'll put in our power that we need, of course. And then let's do a couple more assemblers for the engines. And then let's not forget that we do need an output for the engines as well. We can do that line right here. And we need some more inserters, which we will put right there and right there. And then right here, we'll add in a little bit more power. We'll add in our long-handed inserters that we now need to reach this belt line over here, which means that power pull actually has to go, uh, but we'll add in that one there that one there, one more power pole, add in the recipes, and then these should begin working. Oh, except they're not working, and I already know why. Let's see if you guys can spot it. It is because I have the wrong direction of the inserter, which we can solve very easily just by hovering over the inserter and rotating, which I will do just like that, and you can see now it is working. And in what feels to you guys like really quickly, but long time for me, Logistics 2 is finally finished. It took so long, partly because it is more expensive than a lot of the other researches this early game, but also because I was not having a very good amount of green science packs getting produced. So in the time it took to research, I reallocated a couple things around. I ended up using a filter splitter right here to filter off the excess iron plate that I had. This goes underground and joins back up with the iron plate over here. So that way it could further feed the iron gear machine that I had originally here, as well as I added another one over here. I also added in another assembler for red science production, and I extended the green science production down just a touch more as well. And of course, as you guys can see, also added in some more labs. So that actually helped with the research speed as well. So now that Logistics 2 is finally done, we can move on to the one last thing we have to research, which is automobilism, which is the entire goal we've been working on so far, pretty much this level. Let's go ahead and start the research. It should be done in half the time that it took for Automation 2. And any minute now, automobilism is going to pop, meaning it is now done. First a main objective of the game, or at least the level so far, is done. We got the research done. Now we have to use our research to build a car. Now, just to update you, because there was another little bit of a cut in between my research, not that it took too long, but as I was waiting around, I ended up automating the uh, ammo production onto these belt lines here, which then feed into the nearby turrets. So I no longer have to feed them by hand, which is really nice. I'm feeling much more well defended, as you can see, now that I have a good wall system and uh, automated turret system too. I also added in two more labs to speed up things even further and I knew that I could afford it because I have all of these science packs backed up and keeping up with my research. So that was really all that changed and now all we have left to do is to create that car. So to do so, let's actually take a look at what it takes and where it is for starters. Okay. 
So we can do this easily by hand. It just takes 20 iron plate, eight engines, and five steel plate. And I have plenty of engines stored up on this belt line here, so I'm just gonna suck it up by pressing my A key. It gave me how many engines? It gave me 36 engines, so I could make uh, more than four cars. Of course, you can't make a decimal car, but uh, let's grab some more iron plate, which we can do by sucking stuff up nearby here. And uh, that gives me 26. I should be able to build that car now. And there it is. Uh, if I can find it in my inventory. So now we will plop this down like that. It does require fuel, which I conveniently have on hand. I have um, 151 coal in there. Now to enter the car, uh, to take it for a test drive, I just press for me, enter on the keyboard. It might be similar for you guys. And there we go. We are off to go exploring and killing trees and hopefully uh, not taking too much damage. Oh my gosh. It is a good idea when you're driving to have a good internet and to make sure you have some ammo in the car or something to defend yourself. Oh, that is enough joyriding. Ooh, and let's not die. Uh-oh. Try to avoid getting in some tight spots. Uh, my engineer is saying he should pack up for the trip. I don't know what I'm walking into here. And cars, I honestly don't like too much because they are so kind of wonky with their driving. But they're not too bad for getting around in really far off locations. I do prefer trains or um, walking with some exoskeletons, but that will come much later. Ugh, gosh. And then to exit, you just press enter, just like you did when you entered the car to begin with. So pack your car with materials. So we need to get some steel plate, uh, 200 firearm magazines, 20 gun turrets, uh, 200 copper plate, and 400 iron plate. That should be super easy. So we'll pull the iron plate, uh, let's see, off of here, I guess. No, we can do it up near at the top. Uh, steel, though, let's do a box there. And we'll cap it off at 400, which should be there. We'll grab a 200 copper plate, easily stored right there. Uh, we'll grab some more iron plate here by just sucking it up and we can. And then I think we'll um, also take some and put it into a box nearby. So that might take a minute. Uh, I think the most time consuming thing to fill up will be the fire, no, it'll be the gun turrets for sure. Cause we have to have 20. And so I would prefer to automate this so I'm not just crafting 20 gun turrets in my pocket. So uh, we'll need copper plate, iron plate, and iron gear wheels nearby. Man, if only I had more room, I could easily um, kind of do that from over here. But what I think I will do, since I already have an iron gear wheel machine here, I'm gonna do some underground beltage like that to extend the uh, copper plate. We can do some more underground belt magic there. So we can join up the iron gear wheels and that leaves some iron plate as the last thing, which is pretty much the number one thing I am lacking in this space. Cause I didn't think this level was gonna be as nearly extensive as it was. So I don't have much of an iron smelting build. All right, I do need a couple more assemblers made though. So let's suck up a little bit more iron here. We'll make some, just one more assembler. Uh, actually, let's put that box back because I do need to collect 400 of it, which seems like an awful lot. Um, and then let's pack what we have already made into this car here. All right, 200 copper. Only 22 iron plates so far, but that will grow. Uh, 50 steel plate, not a problem. 
We've caught coal already in there. Firearm magazines, I will just steal from my own personal inventory. Um, so we're just now gonna have to wait on the iron plate a little bit. But I can grab a little bit of it there. We'll just grab a little bit here and there. But let's go ahead and automate those gun turrets. We can put the assembler right here. Let's craft a couple more inserters. And we're gonna be using a long-handed inserter to pull just from there. And then a short inserter like that. Let's put in the recipe. And then we need an output, which we'll do via a box right there, since we already have power in that area. And let's cap it off at 20. Uh, this will take a little while because we only essentially have the iron plate that's uh, getting put into this assembler from these two smelters over here. So I will try to just collect some that I can and feed it by hand. But long story short, we're gonna have to wait. Well, I've waited a little while longer. I've got all of the iron plate and everything else I need in the car except for three more gun turrets, which I have in my pocket. And I'm gonna place in the car now. There we go. That little thing over here to the top left is gone. My engineer is saying that should be it. Let's go. And we did it. Victory after a long, almost two hours of this level, level four. This is by no means gonna be any speed run of this tutorial, but we did get a lot of the bare essentials down for science and automation. I can only imagine what level five is gonna be like if it took me this long to do level four, but I hope you guys will continue to join me and I'll plan on seeing you guys very soon for the finale of our Factorio 1.0 tutorial series. See you then.